Hello, we are here at 20th ARC Industry Forum 2016 in Orlando, Florida. I'm delighted to have Raj Batra with us today. Raj is the president of Siemens Digital Factory USA. Welcome, Raj. Thank you, Andy. Raj, we are hearing a lot of buzz out there about Industry 4.0 and Industrial Internet of Things, digital transformation, and so forth. Could you tell us a little bit, how is Siemens helping your clients uh, go through this digital transformation? Well, you know, I mean, let me start with this and just say the company is focused on three core areas, digitalization, electrification, automation. These are the three core focus areas across all of our divisions. And digitalization has an incredibly important play I mean, across all the industries, and it's, as you know, it's a part of IoT, and you know, I think if I just cite a statistic, I mean, I think McKenzie said that uh, by the year 2025, if the U.S. fully embraces digitalization, we talk about a $2.2 trillion impact on, on GDP. So it shows you from a macroeconomic perspective how big this topic is, just for the U.S. But, of course, we have a long way to go here in the U.S. I mean, because in the U.S., you have a digital maturity, mo maturity model with certain companies that are extremely good. You look at the automotive industry, for instance. Um, you look at the, you know, where they have, you know, record output this year. You look at the aerospace industry with good, great historic backlogs, quite frankly. The food and beverage industry is a modernization topic today. And then, you know, of course, the oil and gas industry, the break-even points are being lowered a bit. So, you know, I, I mean, now you have to get more productivity. They look for ways to do this. So digitalization spans across the, in the entire spectrum. For us as Siemens, what I would say, the biggest factor in digitalization is time to market. You know, when we believe virtualization is one of the most decisive factors when we talk about Siemens, being able to, to simulate, to model, and do this with almost 99% accuracy, accuracy in certain industries, um, that can have a game-changing effect in time to market. Because, you know, it's not about only proprietary things, but it's about how fast you can get to market with your, with your products. And digitalization just accelerates this. Because what happens if you don't have a manufacturing line or a physical assembly line. You have to be able to virtualize this, model it, simulate it. And so, you know, the acquisitions the company is making further expand um, on this digital model, being able to simulate with a very, very high degree of accuracy um, versus the real machine. Right, Industry 4 is very hot there in Europe and Germany and so forth. Uh, uh, how can U.S. companies win using Industry 4 principles? Well, well, you know, I think everyone has to take a journey from the industrial Internet of Things or Industry 4.0, which you know more or less are the same. Um, you know, Industry 4.0 has to deal with the industrial side of IoT, and you know the Internet's accelerating all of our businesses, and that means that supply chains are changing. Companies want to be able to capitalize on the Internet economy, do things very fast. Mass customization is at play in the U.S. People aren't waiting for the uh, last generation of products on ships to decide what they want next. So you know these are all really important factors in Industry 4.0, and everyone has to take that journey and start somewhere. But I think what helps the United States is, first off, the consumer demand is still very good in the U.S. You know, we're insulated largely from the rest of the world, um, and I won't say completely, I mean, you know, but we, we sidestep a lot of geopolitical impacts based on our very, very strong consumer demand. You know, and, um, you know, then, of course, you look at, um, you know, the big crew change with, with the, uh, you know, roughly 25% um, 25 people, 25 of the people are leaving the workforce, you know, in the next decade or eligible for retirement from the workforce. So we bring a very tech-savvy millennials into the workforce that are very tech-savvy, very capable, and they're embracing digitalization. And so I think if you look at these factors, you know, strong consumer demand, you know, good entrepreneurial spirit with the workforce, very motivated people, very tech-savvy people, um, you know, it's just a good combination of what digitalization, virtualization, industrial internet of things, and IoT are gonna really drive in industrial and manufacturing environments. Excellent. Uh, we had this discussion here last year. Could you tell us a little bit, you know, what are your most significant or uh, achievements over the last year, some things that you're really proud of, that your new solutions you're bringing to your customers? Yeah, well, well first, let me start with the innovation R&D topic, because None of this happens without great research and development and innovation. So when we talk about Siemens, this is what the company stands for, is even you know, in good times or bad times, you know, we are very, very strong in how we innovate, how we invest in our businesses. Digitalization is one of those active fields. And um, uh, so that's, that's the first thing. I think you know, we spent roughly 4 billion euros in 2014. We'll, we'll, we'll increase that 20% 
in 2016 to almost 4.8 billion euros. Um, and a big part of that is earmarked for the digitalization initiative. So that's the first thing. I would say the second thing is, you know, we see a lot of greenfield and modernization. So we've been able to grow market share in core industries, um, in our core industries, you know, um, in industries that have to be modernized because people want the best technical solutions. So, you know, so we want to engage in a head-to-head -head technology battle with our competitive environment because we think that innovation starts to pull away from the pack. And we got a lot of examples um, you know, where we've really picked up ground. And I would say the last thing is the digital enterprise platform. Um, probably what also sets us apart is the ability to um, look at the design of a product, you know, and, and do this virtually and tie that into the manufacturability of a product. So Team Center as the collaborative backbone, you know, to, to virtualize, you have to have everything on a digital model. You know, the plant's gotta be on a digital model, the product has to be on a digital model. Your automation environment has to be digitalized. So we use the team center backbone. And then that you know, lets us connect product lifecycle management, MES systems, and automation engineering holistically. Because 80% of the manufacturing costs are predetermined in the product design phase. So if you don't have control of the design, you don't have control of the manufacturing environment. So these are really important drivers. And I would say that no PLM company independently owns an automation company, and no automation company owns a PLM company. And so you can imagine the meet points here. There's so much innovation and invest in defining the meet points to give productivity to our end customers who ultimately want to get to market much quicker. Um, also recently, uh, Siemens has made significant investment in analytics-driven services. Uh, could you tell us a little bit you know, how you are trying to help uh, uh, your customers uh, in this area? Sure. Well, you know, this is, this is indistinguishable from, you know, when we talk about Industry 4.0, Industrial Internet of Things, you know, obviously we're on open um, industrial backbones now. You know, industrial Ethernet is very pervasive in, in IoT. Um, and so it's extremely important we look at services and we look at data, how data is being moved around. And we focus on predominantly four areas, you know, plant um, energy analytics, asset analytics, industrial security, and predictive maintenance services. And one thing is how the data is generated. So even something as simple as a power supply in every control panel in the world is on a green hose generating a lot of ethernet data. The question is, what do you do with it? How do you process it? And do you have the right domain expertise to be able to make, to enhance the decision quality in those manufacturing environments with that data? And so this is where the domain expertise plays an important role with the collection of data. Because, you know, U.S. companies are still saying that you know, they believe big data, we talk about zettabytes of data now being moved around, um, that they believe big data is one of the highest priorities in their business, but very few companies are, are actually using it wisely. So, um, so, you know, it's almost the tale of the haves and the have mores. Raj, these are all very excellent points. Uh, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, we have been listening to Raj Batra, President, Siemens Digital Factory, USA. Thank you for watching.